Want to get us started here? Uh, sure. Yeah, this is uh, St. Louis Real Estate Investors, uh, August 16th, uh, 11 o'clock uh, networking session here. They have every Friday, John and I, Laura, and whoever other board members and anybody wants to join us. Um, we do have a couple of uh, reminders. Uh, big one is next Tuesday, coming up uh, on the 20th. We got Dale Sweet, uh, a Missouri tax law expert, and he's going to be speaking, telling us all about the tax sales that are coming up uh, in most of the counties. It's on the, the 26th, the following Monday, the fourth Monday in uh, August. So that should be a great presentation. And if you get there early, he, he's going to be up on, on at 7 o'clock. But we open the doors and have food available at 6.30 for networking. And uh, this month we're going to have uh, Jeannie's bringing the sandwiches and I'm picking up those uh, some salads. So we're going to have sa sandwiches, salads, and refreshments if you get there, get there early at 6.30. And uh, like I said, Dale will start at uh, 7 o'clock. Should have a great presentation. I'll be sure to collect all your tax sale questions for, for Dale Sweet and he'll have the answers. So, uh, and then also uh, September 9th coming up uh, is our September, just, just around the corner, it'll be September before we know it. Uh, September 9th is our our networking lunch at the, the Applebee's on uh, Olive and uh, 270 in uh, Creed Core. And it's at uh, 11950 Olive Boulevard in Creed Core. So I hope, you see, hope to see you there at uh, 11 o'clock on the September 9th, the second Monday, instead of the first Monday because of Labor Day. It's the second Monday in September. So, uh, Laura, do you want to start us out with uh, our normal disclaimer? All righty. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Good morning and welcome, everyone. First, I'd like to do a bit of housekeeping. Feel free to unmute yourself when it's your turn to speak. Please be mindful of everyone else by muting yourself while others are speaking. You're welcome to put any contact information that you want to share into the chat. We meet here to share deals, look for deals and solutions we have in need with our real estate. We are not your financial advisors, attorney, or accountants. We do not endorse or recommend any specific solution or contractors here. You're advised to do your own due diligence to your own satisfaction before you invest. The first Friday of each month is Ask the Attorney with Ms. Catherine Davis. Our meetings are typically recorded, so only share what you want others to know. Okay, thank you, Laura. Um, John, do you want to add anything uh, or elaborate on anything uh, more about the, uh, the tax sales? And um, no, they're up. just coming up quickly. And um, if you don't have your list, you better hurry up and get it. Uh, we've been out actually getting lists. It's kind of fun because uh, I know the county that we're uh, that we're we just built in down near Madison. You have to still go to the courthouse. You cannot get it online. They cannot email it to you. So I had to go in there and have get a copy of it from mm -hmm. them. And very interesting. They're, they're a very small county. And it's the first one I kind of seen in a while. They do not have any third year tax sales. They have one second year and probably a dozen first years, which is uh, pretty interesting. But those are the kind I actually personally like because those are usually people that not a lot of people have hounded yet, and mm -hmm. they're coming up. In fact, they had we had one um, in another county I was looking at. I sent out one letter, and the guy called me, and we're going out to look at that property on Wednesday. So we yeah. might uh, we we might have a deal. It's kind of on the way down to our place. So I kind of let you know as that comes up. But yeah, like you said. Um, Lloyd Dale Sweet, he's probably the expert, uh, the top expert, St. Louis, St. Louis County. Uh, he will be in talking to us. So uh, he's a good person to know. He's one of the speakers at the, at the you know, we talked about this a little bit, the uh, Missouri Tax Sale Seminar, which is coming to St. Louis from Scott Walterbach. Um, so if you're not on the list, I highly recommend you get on the list. Um, because it, it'll probably sell out next year. And that's uh, it's really the best tax sale seminar I probably have ever been to. Because Missouri, as we probably, you know, a lot of us know, it's got 115 different counties and cities and counties, entities, I call them. And they all are different. You have to be there uh, to bid at the auction in person. And it's kind of 
kind of funny the way they do it, but um, you're going to find out a lot of good information. And, um, you know, if you, if uh, a lot of attorneys and collectors will be uh, are at this tax seminar, this was the third annual we just went to, and he's doing the fourth next year. We're really happy to have him come into St. Louis because that'll save a lot of us uh couple of hotel nights and traveling and everything else we go through. And um, it wasn't very expensive. It was like $100 for the whole day. And that included lunch, which was really unheard of, if you ask me. I mean, most most things like that with the information you got would just be a lot more a lot more money. But there'll be collectors there, too. Government employees. Um, there was uh, code enforcement people that would talk to our group. There was Dale Sweet was one of them, talked about the quiet title process. I know um, Princess and I were just kind of talking about that a little bit. But the quiet title process, a lot of people think you can just go buy a um, tax property and that's the end of it. It doesn't quite work that way. There's redemption periods. There's a lot of things that go to that. I mean, it's it's complicated, but it's not that complicated. And if you get in the right room with the right people, you can learn all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend that you get on, if you if you haven't got on the list, I know I got a lot of you guys on the list, but go ahead and um, send me an email and um, I'll get you on that list because that's June the 20th, 2025. And that will be at St. Louis Area Realtor Building next year. So that's about all I got to say. I'm just excited about the tax sales because they're coming up. So uh, yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, that, that uh did you have to pay for the copies uh, at the uh, for the uh, Xerox machine to make the no, copy? But, no, but I did go down to the uh, the, the clerk and I bought a plat. Uh, well, they call it a plat map. It's not really a plat map, but it does have a lot of stuff in there that I could uh, I could use. But it was thirty five dollars for a little bitty book that they printed up themselves in the back room. So. <laughs> Well, they got to make money somehow, so it's uh... it's all fine. Yeah, she asked me if I wanted more than one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I downloaded uh, you know St. Charles one was on last last week it uh, was on their website, so I I downloaded that. Been looking at it here and there, uh, but I just haven't had I had a crazy schedule. I I would just say right now, in, in a lot of these, you still have to call even if they can email them to you. But right now is the best time. Get the list right now while it's fresh in their head. Even though they're busy, you can call up any of the collect or collectors, the treasurers, whoever handles this the sales, uh, you know, for for the county. They will give you the list right now. If you wait till after the sale, you're probably not going to get it. But this is a and the, the, a lot of them go away too, even the ones that are online. But get mm -hmm. these, and this is this is all your leads for the year, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you save several of these up and you've got people to go through. Go back and see if they paid the taxes. Because um, a lot of the things I have found, like with one reason I didn't go with, uh, I didn't contact investors a lot, you know, LLCs and corporations is because a lot of these play the game just to keep them out of the tax sale. They'll play, they'll pay like Friday before the sale on Monday. And a lot of them have that pattern. You can kind of see that, but some of the regular, you know, regular folks that, uh, you know, they have some problems you'll see coming down the road. There's three times that I actually like to look at my list that I'm, I'm accumulating right now. The first time is in May. OK, because I go back and look in May, because by the end of May, if you don't have your taxes all paid up, it will go to the tax sale and you have to pay them all. If there's more than one year, you have to pay everything to stay out of the tax sale. That's also when they notice they put notices on the properties. They go out there and they hammer down a little stake in your yard saying the tax sales, you know, that you're going to be if you don't pay it by then. The second time is right now, the end of July through August through the tax sale. This is another good time. Get a hold of the people right now because that's when you can make deals with people behind on their taxes. The third time, which I think is is really probably another one where a lot of people don't do it, is December because all the taxes in Missouri are due by the end of the year. There's And most people, this is what I found over the years, most people that in in um, even in real estate, they take off in December. A lot of people don't work at all. That's typically my busiest time because that's when people it's really fresh in their head. Plus, you have the holidays and you have everything else coming up. And if they don't pay it by the end of the year, then you've got another year. And especially if you only got one or two or three years and you're not coming up to the third year tax sale, which is five years. So these, this is a great time. Get your list right now. That's my recommendation. Call up all the counties and get your list right now. So anyway, show yeah. up on the 20th and uh, in, in Dale. That's all I can say is just, just do it. You'll learn, learn some, a lot of the, uh, the details. It'll, it'll demystify all the, the details uh, that go along with uh, going to the tax sale. Okay. 
Well, who's got, uh, who wants to start things out uh, for us, haves and wants uh, today? Um, you got something to uh, offer, a uh, property for sale or a service to offer to uh, real estate investors? Well, we're here. If you're looking for a property in a particular area, we might have a wholesaler that's uh, out uh, knocking on doors and trying to find those, find the deals, so. But in the meantime, I see we got uh, Stacy and David from Pro Soto Property Solutions. Glad to have you here today. Uh, you're, they're one of our supporting vendors, and I usually give them an opportunity to give a pitch for their their business. So, uh, Stacy, if you want to go ahead, or David, whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll jump in. Thank you. Happy Friday, everyone. Stacy Lowe here. I'm with Soto Property Solutions. I am a licensed realtor for um, in the state of Missouri. So is Dave as well. He's my boss. Um, we have a couple different offices, one in St. Louis and then one in Cape Girardeau. We, and we specialize in property management. So if you have any investment properties in the area, please reach out. We would love to manage it for you. Um, and we do everything for you from start to finish. So it's really a great opportunity to get some passive income in. Um, we do everything, marketing, photos, turnover work. We find the tenants, we screen them. We're really strict with that. All the accounting, oversee all of the maintenance. Um, we do tax preparation for you at the end of the year. Um, so really just, you guys just get to sit back and relax and we handle it all for you. Um, give me a call or email me. My email is Stacy S T A C Y at S O T O P S dot com. And then my office number is 636-305-3380. And I am extension 311. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Stacy. And you also find our contact information on our website, S T L R E I A dot com down the, the right hand side the, the one as one of our supporting vendors so thank you for that okay everybody had time to think about to get their questions together or get their uh, thoughts organized and what they're going to talk about today um i just like to know where people are looking at for properties um whether for flips or um to have um tenants in where say again you're looking for where people are there that are looking for rental rentals where they're looking yes where they're looking at for those are flips just because um i've, I've had some people reach out uh trying to jv for work and i'm, I'm telling them i don't have anything currently. I remember some people from the group looking in like Overland, um, but just trying to see where, you know, where the investors are really looking at so I can hopefully bring something to them. Okay. 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 So you're looking to, to, to wholesale some things and know where to look. Okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, we have investors from all over the, the region here, even on the uh, east side over in Illinois. I know a lot of our, some of our members are from Illinois. Um, anybody want that's looking for properties want to give Princess a good way? <laughs> uh, a hint of uh, where you where you're scouting for properties. I myself, I all my rentals are in uh, St. Charles County, uh, St. Charles City, and St. Peter's. But uh, and that's where it's my farming area. Everybody's got their own little area. That's such a good you know. Uh, yeah, you have to limit it. Because uh, nobody can be an expert. At least I can't be an expert on every neighborhood in, in the St. Louis City County and and surrounding counties. So I got my area here. I, and when I I did invest in South South City, and I've been in St. Anne too in the past, over the past, I won't say how many years, forty years, <laughs> but uh, that I've been in the business. So uh, and I knew when I was in those areas, I knew when I was in St. Anne, I knew St. Anne very well, and knew what properties were worth. And when I was in the South City, it did the same. So anybody that's looking for property, um, I want to give a shout out to Princess on where you're, where you're looking, what part of the city, county, surrounding areas. 
Yeah, Reggie said something um, in there. Are you looking for property in Overland or are you looking for buyers in Overland? Overland's a pretty good area. I know that zip code. I know a lot of people invest there, 63114. That covers like, like Lloyd, you just talked about St. Anne and um, a couple other places. That's a good one, a good area mm -hmm. um, right around the airport there. Mm -hmm. um, St. Charles is always good. It's always a good farming area, and like like uh, Lloyd said, the the tax list just came out. That's a good, that's a good one to go get, and especially if you look at ones not the third year, but the first or second year, uh, before they get in a really a, what they call you know kind of like a jeopardy where somebody could actually buy it. That, these are these are all good lists to get right now. I would just say look for deals in um, Princess. There, there's all kinds of people that will do it. You just need to come on every week and say what you got. But if you find some good deals in those kind of areas, you won't have any problem getting buyers. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people that invest in those areas. I mean, a lot of people invest down south too. Um, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. But like Lloyd said, pick a farming area, pick that area, and just you know be the be the go-to person there. Yep. Oh, and I, I just there was another item on tax sales <laughs> when you mentioned companies, John. Reminded me of the last time I haven't I, I didn't see them this year, but in in the, the past when I've looked at the uh, tax sales, and there was always one big one uh for mid rivers mall <laughs> i think they were they just saw it as whatever interest rate they're uh charging you know nine percent or whatever it was uh that, that was they were just looking at it as a loan to push that tax bill down the road and for you know, there were there were several years when the owners of the mid rivers mall it was on the you know it was on the uh they were on the tax tax sale and they, i'm sure they would just they'd pay maybe right right before the deadline they would pay off a year to you know, to uh to you know keep them off of the future uh uh tax sale so uh, but anyway they they've always popped up for for a number of years on the uh the yeah, yeah, commercial areas are good like that lloyd um if you're looking for interest you know, oh, yeah, if you're looking for interest, yeah, because, you know, something like that. Of course, it was a pretty big tax bill, too. It was more a tax bill than I was looking to pay on that, <laughs> that particular one. Because I, when I did go, uh, you know, a few years back, I, yeah, I just picked up some smaller properties that uh, uh, for uh, some money I had to invest. And I, and I got, you got a good interest on it when they, when they pay their taxes and came forward. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually 10% APR. Is it 10? Okay. So, I, I, yeah, I didn't know either because I've never done it, but I looked it up the other day because somebody asked me. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, 10, 10, 12 percent. But uh, that's that's better than you can get a lot of places. Oh, yeah, a lot better than you get at uh, First National or New Frontier. Okay. Well, we'll... Who else I have wants a question? To sure. Yeah, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, so um, I have a uh, property that is real. It's a it's on Main Street in a tiny town called Coffee in Illinois, and um, <clears throat> if somebody has an interest in this kind of commercial property, I think I'm going to own it again. I've, I've been in a contract for deed for the situation, um, but um, I have to take this um, the buyer to court for the second time. It most likely will be an eviction. Um, so that thing is going to come back on the market. And, um, I, if, if I, if this prop, this type of property, I like this niche, but if this type of property were closer to me, I live in North Carolina, uh, it would be a, a better program for me to, to run, but I am, you know, five States away. So, um, I do have my brother in the area, but you know, his, his situation has changed. So I can't have him help me with this project. So, um, if somebody has that kind of interest, I, I sell it for a hundred thousand dollars and, um, I've, uh, sold, sold it before, uh, gaining seven and a half percent interest. So if somebody wants that kind of deal, you know, um, you know, look me up, I'll put my number in the thing. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit more about, is it, is a commercial property on main street? You said, yeah, yeah it's a real, it's gosh, the thing might be 120 years old. So imagine one of those old brick you know, buildings. The funny thing about it is, is that it's just got this quaint look to it and people just really wanted it. And that's how I got it sold. Um, it, um, as a, oh gosh, was it maybe, um, maybe 4,200 square feet. I can't remember right now. Um, it's very small. Um, 
for one of these classical brick buildings, but it's it has uh, three bedrooms in the upstairs and the the under the, the below is all open. I don't know what this particular buyer was trying to do with the property. She was living in it though. She lived her her her, her you know family was living there, and uh, she planned on developing a business on the on the first floor, kind of like a you know Amazon sales kind of thing, which would work in that town. But um, um, that's what the building's about, and it's. It, I, I don't know if the location works for everybody, but the type of investment kind of works for everybody because there's lots of folks who contacted me when I was selling this before. Um, and and it, it took me a little bit, but I was able to, to get it sold. But now it looks like I might have to sell it again. <laughs> uh, yep, that happens. What's, yep, so what's I'll, put, the I'll put my number, I'll put my number in the, the chat. You mind giving us the address, Ryan? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> the... 107 West Main, Coffeen, Illinois. And what's the zip code there? Do you, you know? Oh, know? wow. That's 62. Hang on. Uh, 62017. 017. Okay. Try that. Okay. And, and what? how do you spell the name of the town? Coffeen is C O F F E E N. Coffee plus an N. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, you want you're wanting a hundred thousand for it, um, yep. And you want you're wanting to cash out. It sounds like and not do another contract for deed. Is that correct? Or I, I think I I would be interested. Yeah, I would be interested in. Um, I think what I want to do, what I should do with this property is um, primarily cash out, so I can go reinvest into something else. Secondarily, would be to ten thirty one exchange into another property. Gotcha. Okay, and probably more local. Okay, and and what's the best way for someone to get a hold of you there? Uh, my phone number, I'll put it in the chat. It's 630-334-3433. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and if you could put it in the chat too, that'd be great. We'll get it out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, yeah. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Sounds like a deal for somebody at uh, on the east side looking to invest in the east side. Okay. Anybody else got anything for us today? Everybody else must be looking through their tax sale list today, huh? trying to <laughs> trying to get some mailers out. Uh, go take a drive by, stick your card in the front door, ring some doorbells. Some of those uh, people that are late on their taxes. Good, good, good thing to be doing right now. Well, okay, there, okay. Ryan's got his information about there. Okay, uh, I don't know. Did you did you, did you uh, pull it pull it up on Google Maps, John? Take a look at the building. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a good looking building. That's a great. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you, if you could if you could buy that for a hundred thousand around here. You could probably sell it for three hundred thousand. Oh my gosh! Without yeah. doing anything to it, it'd be a good one for Princess to wholesale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> downtown St. Charles or downtown Oberlin somewhere. Yeah. Well, one 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 thing I was trying to, to develop that I just don't have the team for in Illinois, and that is I was looking for this opportunity to do do these niches like this project because of the interest I had on this particular building. So. Um, uh, a lot of people want to start their, own, their 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 business. Uh, they don't need so much, um, um, you know, roadside, you know, frontage uh, to sell their items because they're not selling so much local. They're selling like Amazon or something more, you know, broad or whatever, and um, and or Etsy, you know, one of those projects, right? And this is the kind of 
you know, property that would work for that. And I had a lot of interest for that also. What I did, what I was going to do if I was, if I was kept it was I was going to develop the building into like a little coffee shop for that particular area, maybe frozen, frozen yogurt, and then sell the, sell the business. And that's how I was going to tie, tie it all together and try to get rid of it. Um, that was, uh, that, that's what so I did drawings and a bunch of stuff for it. Um, but this particular individual, you know, bought it and it, it was working pretty well. Um, trying to get, she was trying to get some stability and hopefully she comes through, but you know, it, I just, you know, 40% chance that she is going to continue to own it. Um, so, um, if I had a bigger, bigger, bigger and better team, I would, I would try to hunt this niche because it just works well. Like I can, I can do a lot of value added, you know, to these kind of projects and these kind of time, these smaller towns and this particular location was, I think undervalued because of the um, local economy, the big, the, you know, the, the prison with its jobs, the uh, power plant with its jobs, which, which actually became electrical with, with solar panels now. And then it has a large, um, oh, um, coal mine, all real close by, like within five, 10 minutes. And it seemed very, very undervalued for that one reason. I was really trying to promote that. It looked like it was working. So anyway, I can't, you know, I don't have the team for Illinois to do to, to deal with these kind of projects, but that's where I was going with it. Ryan, you said a coal mine. Isn't it like Murfreesboro? Uh, it's it's um, I don't know what the name of the coal mine is, but it's um, it's in Hillsboro, Hillsboro, Illinois. Oh, okay. yeah, just was... right off to the yeah. And it's it, here, here's what's hard about the situation is that politically, you know, in Illinois, you know it. The the coal mines co closed a couple times. The power plant switched from coal to elect to solar panels, which is new. And then there's mines some subsidence problems, not in the, under the city, but nearby on one of the roads. It's weird stuff happens over there. Uh, but I I don't know the name of the coal the coal plant, but it's um it's the one near Hillsboro, Illinois, right right to the east of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't know if you might, um, I don't know, it's really odd, but like you said, kind of niche. Um, there's like some of the tourist boards down there, like in Southern Illinois, and they'll do things like like coffee tours or, you know, things like that. So maybe some of those that are like already thriving, they will be able to like, um, you know, expand to a second location. Because I'm, I'm looking at the property too, and I like, like, it is really cool in the space. I could imagine how they would be able to use it. That's just something I was thinking of. But I understand, like, not being able to also, you know, work on the project like that, being further away and really, like, you know, put what you want into it. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm not this, I'm not a great, great developer because I'm a little bit too on the artsy side and I like. I like to do something new, you know, it just real estate's a really hard, you know, is giving me some hard lessons with that. Like I can't be too artistic, but I used to work with architects in Chicago and uh, uh, I had a great time up there. I worked on Pertillo's restaurants, if you've ever seen those things. And I learned a little bit uh, about that. And what I was trying to develop, what, what I tried to develop down here in North Carolina is there's some aesthetics you that are, is good money and some that are, is not. So if you, for example, adjust a few walls, you know, open a kitchen. If you can do that, you know, without going too crazy with plumbing, et cetera, it could be good money. Uh, it, you can really make your place unique and sell versus, you know, cookie cutter, everything beige, you know, that kind of thing. So I was working on trying to develop that. And with this type of project, what I was trying to do is really sell the vision to everybody, really communicate the vision. This thing could be a really quaint coffee shop and here's what your, your numbers could be. You know, and here's how it could look and really try to sell that. And and um, you're right, like, you know, coffee shops with added products, you know, dry goods maybe could work in this type of area. Hey, Ryan, where are you at in North Carolina? Uh, I live right outside of Fort, Le Fort Bragg, which is now called Fort Liberty in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, okay, because but um, it's just kind of funny you say it because uh, Laura and I, my wife, we were in Banner Elk um, recently, you know, back a couple months ago, and we talked to a guy. And, and in fact, what you're talking about here with with the uh, bookstores, what they're kind of looking at. There's a bookstore. It's a Christian bookstore in Banner Elk, okay, and it's 
it's owned by the actually the guy who just bought it. He's kind of retired, but he used to own the um, Charlotte. Uh, uh, what were they? The uh, basketball team there, anyway. And um, he's looking at opening them up across the country. What we talked to him about was because there's all these commercial properties similar to what you got there, but doing exactly that, a coffee shop slash donut shop with like a Christian bookstore. And he's they're doing them right now with kiosk and stuff like that. But there's so many things you can do like that. Now, you're out of the area, so that's a little bit further, too, because where, where you're looking at in Illinois is, is a little ways away. But if you get the right person involved, that might be somebody that um, I could connect. The reason I say that, I could connect you with those guys if you wanted to talk to them about that. I don't know, because you kind of have more, a similar vision to what it sounded like they had with opening sure. up and, places. And let me tell you, I, I hope that when it comes to Illinois, there's a few good things that happen in Illinois, very few. And one of them is... Um, Atlas 46. If, I hope everyone can understand what's going on with Atlas 46. It, it is a tool belt company that has moved into all these small towns. Mm -hmm. They soak up all these quaint, quaint old brick buildings. They clean them up and make them still look old. And they do put all their sewing shops in there and they sell these, these, um, these uh, tool belts and such for like, you know, it, the full kit's like 800 bucks or so. It's like they're, it's like they're a good American made group. It's founded by a Marine Marine reserve and uh, it's a fantastic company. And they're in Hillsboro, a town of 7,000 people. They moved there recently. And they also had a place. It really depends on politics because they also moved into Vandalia nearby, but they just recently moved out because I think political leadership, the, the town mayor, you know, they just weren't getting what they needed. And um, these people kind of look for these kind of things. And I'm just really impressed with some of these kind of groups that choose small towns because of the, the staff they can get. And the um, um, they want to stay America made. They, they, they get away from, you know, more troubled locations and come to these smaller towns with, with, with you know, with a certain type of worker. And, um, and I'm really applaud their efforts. But the, the, the aesthetic, going back to the aesthetic part, I love what they do inside their buildings. I mean, it's just very simple, but they just clean it up and it's, it's classic manufacturing coming back and working well. And that's, that's what I respect about them. But yeah, I, I will take that contact if, if you, if you have it. Yeah. Let me, I'll look that up and give you the information there. I, that's somebody you may want to just have a conversation with, because that's uh, what they're looking to do. And it's kind of, almost fits with what you're doing. And they're, they're actually from North Carolina, which I thought was interesting because we were just there talking to them just a couple months ago. So uh, I'll, I'll get that for you and reach out to you. All right. Very cool. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Well, good. Anybody else uh, got anything today I want to talk about? Anybody has any questions? Or anybody looking for any uh, contractors? Let me say I'd be looking for a roofer, but I got you got a you got a roofer lined up. I'm just got to get my insurance company lined up to pay for a couple of roofs on since the hailstorm. But uh, maybe making a trip to my my uh, <clears throat> insurance agent today since the adjusters aren't calling me back. Anyway. Nobody has anything else. We can wrap it up here today. It's getting uh, 11.30. Call an early, early day here. Unless somebody has something else. Pops in their mind. Tony had some good, good discussions here with on a property if you're looking for a, an old building over in uh, Coffeen, Illinois. I think Ryan's got a deal for us. Yeah, and and um, I think I bef the last time I was talking on here, I think I was talking about... Um, my selling a note, right? Yeah. And so that's the same, the same 
building, she what happened is my my as I was trying to sell the note, the the ten, the buyer was getting late. <laughs> so that's what that's what happened with the coffee building, and so now it's just reasonable for me just to sell it and somebody else take it over. Um, but my brother's building um, is that project that I was working with Laura, and I really pre appreciate the contact with that, and I I still we still have an interest of um, um, of getting that thing sold. Um, and if somebody wants to come out and see it, uh, I can I can schedule a um, you know a viewing with my brother who who owns a building, um, and uh, that's in um, that's at six twelve West Main uh, in I'm sorry six twelve West West Gallatin in Vandalia Illinois. If somebody ever wants to come and see that, okay. Yeah, was uh, yeah was it Laura Lennington uh, you got you in contact with yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's real useful. We're we're actually putting in her, uh, you know, if she comes up with, with a with a buyer, then we're going to try to put her and in, in as an exclusion. We're we are going to get a listing agreement, um, but I'm trying to put folks in in the exclusions before that happens. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Well, we can put something together on that too. Okay, well, nobody has anything else. I'll get back to looking at the St. Charles tax, tax list. Uh, that's what I was doing before I got on here. So it's taken a few minutes to run through it, came up some properties that are in my farming area. Um, uh, I have a quick question. I'm not sure if any, anybody knows, but... Um... Last I heard about the Corporate Transparency Act, um, it was on hold, and I'm wondering if that has changed. Does any is anybody does any if anybody knows? If you don't, it's fine. I know it's a like technically a legal question, but yeah, I've, it is. And yeah, you know, as as Laura said, we're not your attorney, but uh, uh, I have heard. Yeah, it's on hold, but uh, it's. You know, unless John or Laura or Amber, maybe some other board members on here that hear anything more recently. Um, the recommendation that I heard was, yeah, it's on hold now, but uh, if it if it gets uh, it goes forward, you know, it, it's it's still as it stands right now. I think it's being uh, contested in the courts, but if it uh, still stands here, the, the deadline still stands. So. Uh, the recommendation was, uh, as one of the attorney's blogs that I read said, go ahead and file it, and that way you're you're covered. Otherwise, it's going to be a rush at the end of the year, and everybody's, and their website's going to go down, you're not going to get in, and, you know, the penalties are too awful. I went ahead and uh, filed for my two LLCs, so uh, just to get it out of the way and put it behind me. Okay, thank you. So, I don't know, anybody else got any, uh, heard anything different, or... Got any recommendation for Renee? I guess not. Yeah, it hasn't been there. And we've been too tied up with tax sales <laughs> the last last few weeks here. Haven't heard any new news on the on the uh, transparency uh, corporate transparency act. But that's that was the latest I heard, and I went ahead and filed that. So I kind of put that behind me. It's just. Yeah, if it goes through it, I'm, all, I'm covered. If it doesn't go through, well, hopefully the, the, the data will just be trashed. Yeah. Um, did um, How long did it take you to file it? Was it complicated? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, I just have to have uh, I, um, get all your information together. I think they give you a list. I, I, I got a list of, uh, um, I forget who it was. There was a, one of the attorneys that we've had referred to that that does blogs and stuff for real estate investors and um had a good in fact i think it was in our uh yeah i know yeah uh, we had an article in our newsletter a few months ago about it and it was yeah i forget who's whose it was um no okay no. yeah i haven't first i have the newsletters yeah, the newsletter, yeah there's a reference look at them whoever, yet. <laughs> you know it was the person who wrote that newsletter i went on their website i was at uh uh was it jeff watson
Yeah, I think it was Jeff Watson on his his website. If you go to Jeff Jeff Watson's website, he had a a, lot, a checklist of everything you you need to get together when you, and then you go on to the uh, uh, Finra's um, website to get into it. Okay. Yeah, I just um, not a big deal, but um, my registered agent company that I use for the for my personal LLC and the partners LLC. Um, just sent out a letter saying that they could do it for us for, you know, a small fee. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know, probably sounds like it's just easy to do it yourself. Well, yeah, it might be. Or yeah, if they do it for a small fee, you know, it's done right. Anyway, if they're, if they're, if they're, if they're your registered agent. Yeah, true, true. Puts Thank you. On, puts it back on them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else got any? I've got the website. I'll put it in the chat here. You can go look at it. Um, it didn't look, I haven't done it yet for our companies, but it doesn't look very hard to do. <laughs> but there it is. You can click on that and mm -hmm. check it out there, Renee. Yeah, it was it was fairly straightforward. There was a little, I had a little confusion on uh, one of the, uh, one of the questions, but I got it. I read deeper into their the uh, Finra's uh, instructions and uh, got the answer to it. Oh. Okay. Well. Yeah. Oh, there we go. FinCEN, there you go. I was thinking I was confused with another FinCEN. Financial Crimes Enforcement Branch. For all us criminals that own yeah. LLCs. <laughs> all us real estate criminals. Huh? <laughs> Criminalizing everybody that started a, yep. an LLC. <laughs> yeah, um, like you said, though, Lloyd, too, um, what, what I've seen is people said, don't be the first and don't be the last. So yeah, they, they were recommended probably September, the end of September, go in there and go ahead and fill it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you can do it, obviously, whatever you want, but. That'll get you. That'll get you there. Yeah, you know, I did it ahead of time, so I'm hoping to be out uh, in, enjoying the fall color of the aspens out in Colorado in September. So, okay. Well, if nobody else has anything, I guess we'll call it a day for today. Hope to see everybody on the next Tuesday on the twentieth. 6.30 with Dale Sweet at the uh, Shriner Center here in St. St. Louis. So uh, check us out. All the details of all our stuff is on, we got it on Meetup. We got it on uh, our website, stlreia.com. Find out about all our events. I hope to see you at one soon. Till then, see you next time. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.